Hi, I'm Brandon Smith. I'm an attorney for the state of Tennessee. I live and work in Nashville. Hello, my name is Jose Mercado. I'm the director of policy communications and strategic partnerships for a, a lobbying firm in Washington, D.C. Uh, named DMP Creative Strategies. In 2022, America is going to have a very interesting midterm election. Uh, I think that what we're seeing right now, based on President Biden's approval rating in various states and the existing toss-ups uh, that are out there, that Republicans are likely to take a number of seats, uh, anywhere from 30 or more uh, picked up in total, which of course would uh, tip the House over to Republican control. Um, I think the Senate is also likewise uh, possible to go towards the Republicans as well. They only have to win two out of four uh, toss-up states or states that have really close elections right now. And, and both of those states, uh, in two of those states, Georgia and Arizona, the President Biden's approval rating is only around 36 percent. So it's more than, more than possible and I think probably most likely that Republicans are going to take control of both chambers of Congress. I think that will slow some of what President Biden wants to accomplish down a little bit on some issues, on the more controversial issues, but I think on a lot of matters, uh, on mental health reform and national security uh, and just an attempt to keep the economy going in a post-COVID era, I think some of those programs will, will probably see a lot of bipartisan support still, um, but definitely the more uh, leftist uh, policies will probably come to an end for at least a couple of years under, under the Biden administration. I think the question of who will win the November elections in terms of which party is an interesting one. Um, many uh, speculate that Republicans will have a very strong opportunity to reclaim the House of Representatives and have a very strong chance as well in the Senate with the number of key races up in, up in play. Uh, what I contend, though, is that while it's important to, to take a look at the competitive nature of those races, another thing to consider is uh, this, this process of redistricting. Uh, Republicans have been uh, uh, redrawing the lines in many states, especially states where they have a majority and are able to control the commissions uh, that, that speak to this nature, uh, which then results, of course, in the political power. Uh, but Democrats have been fighting those efforts as well. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see how that comes into play. But of course, the, depending on the victor, will, uh, the, the dynamic and the relationship between Congress and the White House uh, will impact the uh, progress of President Biden's um, agenda. So uh, it'll be interesting, although we'll be able to take a look at some of the different uh, mechanisms of, and pieces of legislation that both parties look to pass, uh, and in particular that Democrats look to lead as they look to gain some advantage with voters. Yeah, so Russia and the United States have had a tense relationship for about, you know, 20 years, ever since the end of the Cold War, really. Uh, administrations from both political parties have attempted to reset that relationship, but I think what we're seeing now and what Europe is also seeing now uh, is that the Russian approach to, to geopolitics is one of aggression and, and violence, and that's something that the, those of us in the NATO alliance, those of us in the West, generally those free democratic countries, I just think will not stand by and watch. Uh, I think even today, while uh, leaders from across Europe and the United States and other countries as well have gathered together in Brussels and are talking about new rounds of economic sanctions that are gonna deal significant harm to the Russian economy. Uh, of course, that's gonna create some complications for our friends and for us, but I think if we rely and lean on each other, if the United States and its partners, and like Spain especially, and, uh, and across the European Union and, and the United Kingdom, uh, can weather any sort of economic issues that we see from confronting Russia. I don't think anyone wants this war to become escalated by any means, but at the same time, uh, Ukraine's territorial integrity ought to be preserved, and Russia needs to know it can't push its way into Europe just because it feels like it has the strength to do so. Um, I think one aspect of this that I know a lot of us are also considering is Russia's cooperation with China on this front, which I think just serves uh, to prove a point that I think many of us in Western nations and in the NATO alliance uh, have already recognized, which is that the United States and our European partners, um, Spain, France, Germany, the UK, uh, have an important role to play in balancing out um, uh, the power of some more, ter uh, more dictatorial nations that might want to be aggressive. This is a partnership that we have to preserve. The, Transatlantic partnership is the key to a peaceful world and open and fair trade.
I think the relationship with the uh, decision by President Putin to invade Ukraine is an interesting one, and uh, it's one very that, that, that uh, begs us to pay attention to the relationship between the United States and its allies, including Spain. Uh, we're talking about a relationship that is extremely important. It's one that impacts uh, not only uh, uh, nations, but also the people living in those nations. And uh, we'll want to take a look at um, how, how we can work together. And, and what I think is the program that brings us here today, which is a partnership between the U.S. Spain Council and the Fundación Consejo España Estados Unidos, is an important one because it allows us to build relationships beyond the relationships that we have diplomatically. It allows us to bring prof young professionals, young leaders here to Spain to uh, uh, get introduced and immerse ourselves culturally as well as uh, from a business and political perspective. Spain and the United States have had an interesting relationship throughout our history as two people. From our shared uh, heritage and cultural uh, connections to uh, historical wars that we fought against and with each other, uh, and it's all kind of devolved or, or evolved rather into a state now where we really do find ourselves as allies, as people who value similar things, as people who want to promote freedom, want our people to succeed and be entrepreneurial, who want to create opportunities for those who uh, may not have previously been granted those opportunities, and I think that emphasis on, on freedom, on democracy, on inclusion, on equality are things that unite Spain and the United States. Now, there's a lot of you know, points of contention here and there along the edges, but our shared vision of how to, how to improve the world and work with allies across Latin America in particular is one that I think will continue to develop. And I think that relationship will continue to be strong. Spain has become over uh, over the last few decades, every year has become a stronger and stronger ally, a stronger and stronger leader in the world. And uh, I've said, uh, you know, the United States succeeds when Spain succeeds uh, and vice versa, I think. So uh, working together, there, our two countries can not only just build better relationships with each other, but I think also forge a position of leadership um, in a multilateral sense that helps uh, create positive change both and European relations and international relations, uh, I mean, everything from addressing major issues like climate change or refugee resettlement to just smaller things like fostering entrepreneurial uh, and tech startup companies together and working together on our trade and, uh, and you know, in the occasional uh, artistic collaboration, which has resulted in some pretty interesting American and Spanish uh, cultural heritage as well. So, I think we have a great relationship with Spain and the, between Spain and the United States, and it's a relationship that I predict is going to just grow stronger as the years go on. The current state uh, is one, I believe, that is very strong, uh, very robust, uh, of course, has an opportunity to get even stronger, and I think we're already making progress to, to that end, uh, specifically with the confirmation of uh, uh, Ambassador Julissa Reynoso. We've had the opportunity to, to hear from her, to meet with her in the residence of the U.S. Embassy here in Madrid, España. Um, and uh, uh, I walked away with a very optimistic uh, uh, analysis, optimism of her vision of our shared values between both nations and how we can improve those.